as you all know the Austrian Fancy has council has announced a change uh, a redesign of the CATS exam from CATS to opera exam so the strategies what we are going to follow in elite expertise to help our students our overseas pharmacists to clear the opera exam in the first event but the basic thing uh, which this video will help you is how to design your preparation treating the content area the percentage of questions allocated you would have definitely basic questions but the more uh, focus would be on the therapeutics and the patient care so they're pretty much expecting your standards of practice if it fits their Australian standard of practice. So we have so many minimizing risk programs. This is minimizing risk programs in Australia, like naloxone pilot projects, um, methadone therapies, and we have this um, needle and syringe programs, rum buckets, rich of un unwanted medications, etc., etc. So this is uh, a disease prevention program and like health awareness campaigns going on, health promotion campaigns going on, like flu season, every flu season, we have health promotion for flu, flu vaccinations. Immunization scope has been increased for pharmacists. So I'm sure like some highlights from these areas would be a trigger, triggering factor for Oprah questions. Practicing consultant pharmacist in Australia. I work as clinical pharmacist for Monash Health Hospital in Melbourne. So I'm one of the directors and uh, educators of Elite Expertise. Um, so today I would like to talk about how we are going to train our students for opera exam. This is a high demanded video from our students who are currently enrolled for CAPS exam and some students who are preparing for opera exam for March 2025. Um, as you all know, the Australian Pharmacy has, Council has announced a change, uh, a redesign of the CAPS exam from CAPS to OPERA exam. So the strategies, what we are going to follow in elite expertise to help our students, our overseas pharmacists to clear the OPERA exam in the first event. I'll give you a gist on how we are going to teach uh, for the OPERA exam. So the best site for any OPERA related information, no matter um, like in wherever YouTube channels you might find some videos but the best site for OPERA exam is of course Australian Pharmacy Council. So I will share the Australian Pharmacy Council website and I'll explain you the gist of how our teaching methodology is going to be there to help you clear the OPERA exam in your very first attempt. So now um, sharing. So this is the Australian Pharmacy Council official website where they have given a fair bit of information about OPERA exam and uh, if you see the focus on uh, therapy is more, percentage of focus on therapy is more, 45 percentage therapeutics and patient care. So they're pretty much expecting your standards of practice if it fits their Australian standard of practice. And uh, the biomedical sciences, which we study in our bachelors, wherever we are, wherever we are from the world elsewhere, it's the same medicinal chemistry, biopharmistics, pharmacokinetics, dynamics, food and change. Toxicology principle remains the same, but they are mostly worried about therapeutics and patient care, which is the most important part, 45 percentage weightage of the percentage of questions allocated. I'm sure you must have seen different kinds of videos like, you know, um, strategies to crack or pre exam, what we are going to do, etc, etc. But the basic thing uh, which this video will help you is how to design your preparation fitting the content area, the percentage of questions allocated. You would have definitely basic questions, but the more uh, focus would be on the therapeutics and the patient care. And if you see the biomedical sciences, yes, we have the pathophysiology, immunology, um, signs and symptoms of various diseases, which is a standard for everyone in the world. If you see the medicinal chemistry and biopharmistics, it's pretty much the same as CAPS exam, what we have studied, um, but would be like more focused on the application part. But the same ADME principles of pharmacokinetics would be asked, chemical stability, pharmaceutical microbiology, sterilization, everything would be the same. Kinetics and dio, uh, dynamics wouldn't change much. Pathology and toxicology, the uh, application principles of toxicology principles in the poison cases, they will remain the same but most related to uh, the protocols and guidelines which we follow in Australia would be asked when it comes to toxicology and treatment. And therapeutics and patient care, which is the most important part I would like to stress in today's video about, is the screening for initial patient, patient assessments, okay, um, based on the weight screening, creatine clearance screening. So screening-based questions will be more focused on. Uh, in the opera exam compared to the cap caps exam because the weightage is more in this case the dose calculations will pretty much remain the same as caps exam but if you think about the primary healthcare, 
um i feel in my opinion uh when um apc has explained about the primary health care what they expect you to study they're asking about your ability to manage basic illnesses which a pharmacist you know in his scope can manage of course um an intern pharmacist would do more like would do more of reading and studying and uh, general practice because they are more into australian pharmacy practice but for an overseas pharmacist primary healthcare is a bit like tricky for them uh, because to understand the primary healthcare scenarios in australia is a bit tricky for them because every country is different every primary healthcare practice is different in primary healthcare setting these days the pharmacist scope has been increasing in australia where we are like more towards prescribing rights for pharmacists uh, like uti treatments etc etc how would you treat the basic illnesses like small urinary tract infection or maybe cold cough etc etc all these minor elements that would be asked in primary healthcare and of course some diseases which are under the scope of pharmacy practice like shingles chickenpox treatment um and like herpes virus is treatment which is part of shingles chicken pox treatment and you will have uh, uh, dermatitis dermatitis or skin based infection treatment what a pharmacist will respond to it how will the pharmacist would be treating the patient and how best he would use the medication safely so if you exactly see the safe and effective use of medicines in australia you would be rewarded for the prescribing medications not for not for promoting medications the best pharmacist in australia is the one who would recommend deprescribing medications if they are not useful for the patient okay so safe and effective use of medicines will will minimize the drug interactions contraindications especially if you are thinking about the pediatric and geriatric populations where what the most affected ones the pregnancy so definitely um this area would be more focused on to make it more therapeutic functional and applicable to australian pharmacy practice they are basically testing your readiness to the system so this is what i feel would be tricky and then um, uh monitoring and review performing a medication management review is within the scope of pharmacy practice of course like consultant pharmacists do that here in an advanced level but definitely they are going to test you a basic level of medication deprescribing process if you are able to do if you are able to judge between what to start medication to stop start it straight away or what medication you can like proceed because of its more benefits compared to risk so there is always um a ratio of risk to benefit for the medications and a pharmacist should be able to judge between risk and the benefit of a medication to make sure it is continuous suppose we have furosemide and spironolactone spironolactone has very much cardiovascular benefits over furosemide but furosemide gives symptomatic relief quickly so which one would you deprescribe first okay of course it would be furosemide so these kind of questions i feel um, can be expected uh, in opera exam heart minimization so it's all about deprescribing medication interactions and side effects comparing um, the australian healthcare setting and uh, you should have a basic understanding about how australia works um in com- uh, considering deprescribing so there are some deprescribing guidelines and protocols and i'm sure like they are the highlight areas from where opera questions would come and then we have health promotion and disease prevention we have so many minimizing risk programs disease minimizing risk programs in australia like naloxone pilot projects um methadone therapies and we have this um needle and syringe programs rum buckets written of un- unwanted medications etc etc so this is uh, a disease prevention program and like health awareness campaigns going on health promotion campaigns going on like flu season every flu season we have health promotion for flu flu vaccinations immunization scope has been increased for pharmacists so i'm sure like some highlights from these areas would be a trigger triggering factor for opra questions and a pharmacist and overseas pharmacist should be able to prepare for that and uh, um, apart from minimizing risk program blood pressure screening diabetes education all these areas where the specialist areas are increasing so the pharmacy specialist scope practices is increasing and i hope um it's going to get better in future times from now and opra is going to test some of these disease prevention strategies which are basic level for a basic pharmacist and overseas pharmacist how would he apply like you know 
to those standards of Australia. And then professionalism, confidentiality is what you expect. So privacy law is very strictly regulated here in Australia. And they will maybe uh, pose you some ethical legal questions, not completely legal because APC did mention they are not going to ask any legal scenarios from Australian fancy practice, but any ethical practices which any pharmacist follows everywhere in the world would be a point of test, you know, uh, could be a could be a question. You can see some questions from this scenarios. And um, if you see uh, comprehension and understanding and remembering things and application part, they want you to be a master of everything to clear opera exam. So I'm sure when it comes to um, application fraud, we are following the protocols and theories and if you search for protocols, so 55%, but 55 percentages from protocols and procedures. So the best bet would be, let me share, therapeutic guidelines, the standard practices, because um, all the therapeutic drug, therapeutic goods administration, um, the drugs available in Australia are strictly controlled by TGA, Therapeutic Food Admi uh, Goods Administration. So, um, so all these TGA list of approved drugs, approved names are the only drugs which are available in Australian market. And that is what they will test them for, test you for, because this is what is Australia about. Australian pharmacy practice is completely dependent on TGA goods and administration. What TGA approves is what we see in our practice. So a fair bit of questions from TGA guidelines. So I strongly recommend going to TGA website and you know, having the gist of different TGA medications. And therapeutic guidelines is an excellent guidelines where we have addiction guidelines, antibiotic guidelines, bone metabolism, cardiovascular dermatology. And I'm sure this is a brilliant book to study. I mean, brilliant guidelines protocols to study for opera exam. And then we have EMIX Plus, which will focus on drug drug interactions and side effects. Excellent resource, which we follow therapeutically, stand in the practice therapeutically in Australia, wherever we go, hospital and clinical and retail practice. And then we have a Bible of Australia, Australian Medication Handbook. So apart from the standard textbooks, pharmacology textbooks, which we have been studying for CAPS exam, um, elite expertise would more focus now on AMH, EMIMS and therapeutic guidelines and TGA website for helping you ace opera exam in the first attempt. So we will do all the all the strategy designing for you. Um, and your job is to listen to the lectures and get a good understanding about the Australian practice and system and be ready to become Australian pharmacist. Again, it's a big journey. It's a hard work. It's not going to happen straight away. So I wish all the best for opera aspirants, especially our students and those students who are not our students, but still, um, wanting to be the future pharmacist for Australia. I hope um, I hope you found this video useful. So this is a gist of strategies which we are going to apply and maybe you can follow in your preparation to ace opera exam opera in your very first time. Okay guys, thank you. Bye.